I'm happy to sit across from someone, but I'm not offended to the next time because then you get both get to look out and you're like watching a movie. You're watching the movie of, of the fucking this world full of freaks together. Yeah. It's not even so much to be affectionate. It's because I want us to watch the same show. Hey, welcome back. We're not for everyone. We're an existential commentary podcast hosted by a hater and a lover. I'm Jess. I'm trying to like say our names more up top in case we have new listeners. So I'm Jess. That's Caroline. Oh. Yeah, I'm Caroline. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> Professional podcasts do it. And I noticed and I was like, oh, oh. they have a point. They know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> They have a point. They have a point. And the other name you need to know is Abby Newhouse, who edits our podcast. And she fucking best podcast editor could ever want. She's also a very good dear friend. And she is best in girl. the market. She, she is available to take on more audio editing jobs. So if you need an audio editor, podcast editor, or I don't know, whatever fucking kind of editor, you need a DJ editor. I don't know if she can do that, but I think she would rise to the occasion. You can mm-hmm. contact Abby, who edits this podcast on instagram contact her on instagram it's abby newhouse that's a b i n e w h o u s e right is that her instagram we always that's her instagram we always have it in our episode description so you can scroll down and find it there and also if you follow us on instagram um we follow her like on the not for everyone pod account we only follow me caroline abby and my old podcast so uh you'll be able to find her really easily go yeah. message her she's the best Hire she's her. a prince yes she's ready for you love her to death all right you want to chit chat yeah how are you bitch i'm good i'm in full chaos mode today we sat down and just was like look at your hair <laughs> <laughs> I'm projecting because my hair is like the dirtiest it's ever been. So I just, I'm glad that you don't, you didn't show up looking like the most made up that you've ever been because yeah. that would have really, that wasn't what I needed today. That's not what and we I've, need for our hot takes. I've fixed it now. So if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, this is okay. This is no, <laughs> this is, this is the improvement. I also noticed that like, <laughs> we, first of all, we can't stop talking about our hair. And I think to us asking like, how are you? It's like, I'm going to tell you about my hair. I'm going <laughs> to tell you about my hair. And that's what I'm doing. It's like when I was in, <laughs> I was in a really unhealthy codependent relationship. So sick when I was like, 21 or whatever and when people I started realizing that when people asked me how I was let's call this guy Jacob and I would be like someone would be like how are you doing and I'd be like well Jacob's really busy right now like Jacob's like on vacation right, right. now like, Jacob's like going through this class right now and I couldn't like the way that my well-being was just like whatever this other person was doing it was so sick mm-hmm. and now my illness is whatever my hair is doing the good that's very astute I feel like I definitely have noticed myself do that before and also noticed friends doing that so I like that you like kind of pinpointed what that could mean but also the hair thing is equally astute and I'm glad we're on the same page about it like if yeah imagine hair- if one of us was describing our well-being with our hair and the other one was like no but how are you really like nobody wants that <laughs> we just want to talk about hair <laughs> I don't really want to know. Just tell me what your hair looks like and I will produce the rest. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we're on the same page. (laughs) I do feel like, I feel like I'm talking 100 miles per minute right now. Is this the fastest fastest I've ever done anything? (laughs) I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know what's about to happen. I feel drunk. I feel drunk. I am having a glass of wine. (laughs) <laughs> in an attempt to chill myself because you this are. is the energy I've been having all day without wine. I didn't need alcohol yeah. for this. Um, okay. Can I say two things about speeds and being drunk? Yeah, please. Two things. When I get drunk, I feel like I'm being so fast. You know what I mean? You feel like really witty and snappy and bibbity bop bop bop. Yeah. And I had this feeling. I always had this feeling that like when I was drunk, I was like, I feel like I'm really fast right now. Like I feel like I gotta run a race. And possibly a delusional thought. And then one night, I it was a couple of years ago, I came home, I was like still in New York and was drunk one evening and felt like going for a run because I work out late at night a lot. And I was like, I'm going for a run. And I went for a drunk run and I timed myself because I wanted to prove to myself that I was faster. And I took like two minutes off my mile time. You're I was kidding. I was legitimately so fast. 
it's probably because like you don't feel pain or something like your <laughs> your nervous system is numbed like you can't feel that your knees started to hurt or you like you're not overthinking it like it's definitely a mental physical I know pain thing where definitely. you're just like I can do everything yeah I was like wow. it was so funny because I was like ready to be proven wrong to prove my drunk self wrong and I was like my drunk self knows yeah I love that for you I have a thing that's not the same but it reminded me of this um Say it. last episode i told you we <laughs> talked about like what what did you call it sex wrestling like when you wrestle your partner to try to yes. like start sex especially early yes. in the relationship when you like, don't ultimate... know how to initiate contact i uh, yeah i'll do it even we i we you know now even 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 knowing how to initiate it's just a new sport i play <laughs> it's just <laughs> fun wrestling. it's just <laughs> fucking fun that's true i still do it what am i saying but um I think in general, I have like a very, the way that I know how to flirt, because I don't really know how to flirt, is like competition based. And I'm actually not a very competitive person in other contexts. Like if I go to a game bar or something with friends, or if we're like at a cookout and people are playing cornhole and pong and whatever, I'm like, I'll play, but I don't need to win. I don't really care. I'm just here for the socializing. But when it's one-on-one with someone I'm dating, I get so yeah. competitive about it. As and soon as they're hot. As soon as they're as hot. As they're hot gotta like, win. I will win. I will beat you. I will prove to you <laughs> that I am the woman who should have your heart, which is, I don't think how that works. And <laughs> so um, funny. yeah, one time there was this guy that I was like, I was like, we have to race. Like we will race. And <laughs> I'm not a runner. Like I'm not fast. I don't know why I got in my head that we had to race. And so one night he came over and we raced just like down the hall in my apartment and I totally like slid and fell and skinned my knee and he only noticed that I fell as he was like coming around the bend like he hit the target and he was turning around and it very quickly became like a very heartbreaking thing of like are you okay dude <laughs> <laughs> and I was so confident going into it like you will race me and I will win um yeah so that's what i bring to relationship that to me that is romance though to me like the slipping and the falling is the key i don't think i feel the same impulse to win i feel i definitely feel inclined to put myself oh. in a position of danger right and so it's like how do you me. help me yeah i'm a damsel yeah. in stress now i yeah, need to damsel. see how you handle this mm -hmm. classic damsel i once dated somebody i don't know if i can put this in the podcast but i once dated somebody who anytime i cried he got hard <laughs> it Whoa. was like it was like kind of a joke but it um it was it was like 100% of the time I get kind of horny post cry not if my partner's crying not that I feel like I've seen like one and a half of my partners cry like one and a half times okay. but I'm crying constantly and I feel like afterwards I get a little horny because it's like a release it's like a yeah, release of true. emotions and then like Maybe I've opened up about something, so then I feel closer, and then I get horny. But that's the the cry to hard penis ratio <laughs> is not one that I <laughs> that I'm quite familiar with. I don't think it's the same as if it's the other person. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know. How did you feel about it? Did you I, like it? Yeah, I wasn't opposed. <laughs> I'm like whatever, whatever. Dude. <laughs> Vulnerability is a turn yeah. on in both directions. It was a concern. I was like, is that? sometimes I'd be like, should I be concerned? Whatever. Did you end up hooking up with Hall guy after that? Yeah, 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 for sure. We were already for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we had already hooked up a couple times, so like it was already known. I don't know. It was already known that he was coming over to hook up. Um yeah okay. i don't know why i felt like i needed to like get put something in between the so arriving at my so door cute. and the hookup i was like oh okay like he's here we can't just hook up right away that's right. actually a thing with me too i don't know i feel like i need to like no i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you a while like make yeah let's have while. some that's not what i was gonna say i thought we were on the like, same page that's not what i thought you were gonna say have some entertainment like pre-dinner oh. I feel like your booty is the entertainment, girl. I feel like it is. It I just feel like is. I feel like I have to play it cool. I'm like, I don't want to be a horn dog. So I'm like, what's fucking, you know, what do you want to do? You want to do an activity or something? I guess do that's, a puzzle? maybe that's where it comes from. But I, either way, I don't know exactly where it's rooted, but there is a need to be like, 
activity based like oh we have to do something <laughs> before I don't think one time anyone has ever like showed up my door at my door and we've had sex right away my boyfriend sure, has sure. tried because that's like a hot thing and so I'm him, like oh do you want to like um do you want to do this first or like I have, a, I, have a, I have a three like a race that we could participate in right now yeah <laughs> potato sack potato sack and then I'll it. fuck you I'm so awkward yeah, potato <laughs> egg on the spoon uh let's Father daughter field day throwback, and then we'll get right to it. <laughs> the MM toss. Now we're just naming all the events from Father Daughter Field Day. Do not bring my father into this. First of all, this <laughs> I'm is, so sorry. This is a, this is a sex race, please. It was Father's Day. It was Father's Day. It was Happy Father's Day to the dad. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You remember them? <laughs> remember. No, there's they're, they're still with us. They're, they're still with, with us. us. We love them. We love them. Um, okay, that wasn't what I like really planned to talk about before we get into things, but I liked it. Um, yeah. So this is I call this a dating hack. This is something I would use when I, back when I was dating. And but I still use it now just to like recenter myself, even like with a boyfriend. So this is if you ever struggle, okay, if you're like me and you sometimes like forget how to be <laughs> right. when, when you like a guy or like a girl or like a person, um, you know, you can be like dating somebody. I definitely had the feeling at times where I'd like, I like forget who I was. You forget who you are when you're so wrapped up in trying to um, win someone over. You get so fixated on like, do they like me? Do they like me? Do they like me? And you like forget how how to be. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, I just yeah. described racing and wrestling <laughs> as a part of my pursuing men. I'm very much aligned yeah. with what you're saying. Yeah. And you're like, God, I feel like I've like lost my own sense of humor. Or, like, what do I even like to talk about? Like, how do I have conversation? And like that happened to me when I was dating. It happens to me sometimes now, even having a boyfriend, because I just like I like him because I like yeah. him. And um Something that helps me recenter. This is my hack. <laughs> this is crazy. I <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> it's something that I realized really helps me. Um, okay, so it, I I learned I discovered this from. I realized that whenever a guy, you know, got dumped once or twice, and whenever a guy would either dump me. Okay, wait. I'm gonna say this again. I realized at some point that whenever a guy would either break up with me. Or just make it clear maybe that he wasn't serious or like something that let me feel rejected. Anytime I officially felt rejected by someone, I was suddenly able to be myself. I was mm. suddenly able to feel like, fuck you, fucking wasting my time, leading me on, being a jerk, whatever the fuck they did that offended me. I was suddenly completely able to speak as myself, to be fucking hilarious, to like talk as myself, to be interested, to hold my own boundaries, whatever. And so now sometimes if I get caught up in a moment where I'm like, uh, I'm not even being myself. What am I doing? Who am I? Whatever. I just imagine the person's already broken up with me. I would do this sometimes when going on a date, when going on a first date, I would sit and visualize that they have already dumped me. And somehow that breaks the spell and I would I would be able to show up on the date then and be myself or mm. like yeah if I'm like losing track of myself a little bit I don't know if I'm explaining that right I will just like I will just picture this person has already broken up with me and somehow it helps me recenter because it I think it it releases me from this idea of trying to keep someone or trying yep. to win someone it's like what if they were already gone then you could just yep. chill um and it's it's not it doesn't actually I don't know if that feels toxic like I don't I don't start treating them like they've broken up with me it's it's really how I'm treating myself it's like how I'm interacting with myself does that make sense it does make sense yeah I was gonna say it and then you kind of said it already uh, it's it like releases you of the feeling that there's something to lose because you've already lost it in your head in this like imaginary in this hack um and I do feel like the reason that dating anxiety happens at any stage in dating or in a relationship is because there's that feeling of something to lose whether it's that you like really like the person and you're realizing you really like the person and so now the stakes are higher because you don't want to lose the person you really like or you're having a hard conversation and you're worried that that means that there's something at stake here and that it, it might result in a breakup or whatever and so it's hard to show up as yourself in those scenarios too because you don't want to lose it, whatever it is. Um, I like this. It's interesting because 
I don't know. I love the way your brain works because I feel like the way that a like not even a therapist, I don't know what a therapist would say, but the the thing that like an Instagram therapy type of mindset would say is more probably like just assume that they really like you yeah, you know just assume that they're like totally in it with you and like just treat Doesn't it like work. yes I have this person and I like them and they like me and just have the confidence that like you got the stuff and they want it and then you'll carry yourself in the way that you naturally do and it doesn't you're right. It doesn't work. Get there. Dude, it I cannot. Work. It just doesn't work for me. I can't like focusing on the worst case scenario. It it re it like with work, with so many things. There, there's a bunch of places where I probably should learn my way out of it, but I feel like I've learned to to leverage it to my yeah, use it to your uh, advantage. My advantage. Yeah. And and you're so right. It's those moments when you're focused when you get too focused on like but do they like me you're 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 actually not asking the important questions like not everyone's gonna like you and that's actually not the end of the world it, it's in those moments that I forget to be asking like oh but I do I like them like I'm right. I should still be evaluating you um so I think that's what it can unlock for me yeah yeah totally um that is I feel like every dating conundrum especially in the early stages when you're like figuring somebody out and getting comfortable, like really like somebody, but getting comfortable with the fact that like you like them and it's okay. They're going to stay. Um, it does often come down to that, that mindset shift of like, I'm so worried about if they like me, but do I even like them? Yeah. And if you're not showing up as yourself, if you're finding it hard to show up as yourself, just like, mm -hmm joking and you know being kind of like relaxed and you're in your natural state then how can you know if you like them because you're not yeah. like in your body you're not like <clears throat> in your true self um you're just worried about yeah how they're going to perceive you and you're clamming up so yeah I'm I'm so on board with this I really like it I'm glad you figured it out like I have no clue if it would even work for me or if it's something I've done before I'm not really sure I don't think I've like consciously thought about it this way mm. but it I think it's I think it's for a sense. certain maybe a certain kind of person. Yeah. Um yeah. Maybe not the people that like positivity works for, but <laughs> it it doesn't feel negative to me. No, I don't think it does either. Yeah. <clears throat> it just is free. I think it's freeing. I think that's yeah. what it is, which everybody can get on board with. Okay, that's a hack. It's a hack. She wow. hacked it. <laughs> um okay, let's let's do what we want to do. Get what are we today. doing? What are we doing today? We are going to do a deep dive on hot takes that you guys submitted. So hot takes only. Caroline, tell us more because this this came from your brain. I'm so on board, but like, what what inspired this idea? I don't even remember. I think I had like a <laughs> really hot, sweaty sleep one night, and I woke up. This is what happens. Sometimes I just wake up with like a title in my head and the title was hot takes only and um and that was that's pretty much the extent of the vision I just want to do a bunch of hot takes that you guys sent in I think we're in a pretty good state right now because we're both feeling a little unstable Revved and mm -hmm. I don't I don't even know Jess has fielded the hot take suggestions that you guys have sent in I have not seen any of them Oh, cool. And okay. we're going to react. Oh, wait, did you think I'd seen them? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we have a shared note, but I, I was prepared oh. for the fact that the you may Where's not the have note? looked at the shared note. <laughs> Where the fuck is the note? No. It's somewhere. <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it. I can okay, do it. Well, I can do well, it. Just, I don't know what they are. Is the surprise. Okay, that's actually better because I know what they are. I haven't spent a lot of time like thinking about my hot take, but I've like, I've seen them. I've processed them a little bit. I generally know my like opinion on each one okay um i don't know that my opinion zero... is that hot okay cool Yours i don't think be. it has to be hot it doesn't have to be edgy i think it just has to be true okay I yeah like just that. what you treat just you, it doesn't have to be funny it's just what's true just stick to what's true okay let's start um i'm gonna choose my favorites we got we have like how many do i have in front of me maybe 10 15 of them do you want me I'm to gonna... look at them would that be helpful no I feel okay. fine about this. I I would have um I would have like pinged you and been like make sure okay. to look at them if I really cared. I kind of knew that there was a chance you didn't, and I kind of liked that chance. 
Okay, cool. So, yeah. Cool. Um, okay. I'm going to start with this one. I think a point of contention amongst many. Mm. Morning or night showers? <laughs> um, I can go for sure. Night showers. Night shower all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like how I decompress at the end of the day. Even if like for some reason I had to shower earlier, like I was going to a funeral or I don't know, something that made <laughs> me shower. I will still shower at the end of the night. And I, I don't have a bathtub, but I do lay down in the shower, lay down on my back, let the water pour over you. It's not sexual. It's just something I like to it's feel. just peace. Yeah. <laughs> it's just peace. It's just the only way I know how to live. And do you do um, that every night? The lay down? Yep. Every night. And it's uh, it's unless it's like a super rushed shower, but it's like my total yeah. decompression time kind of let, cause I work really late at night. So I like let the work then leave the body. And then, yeah, it's super steamy in here, in in there. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also work out at night, which I tend to work out in yeah. the evening too. So that contributes to it. I'm also a night shower person, but I used to be a morning shower person. And only Ooh. within the last like year or two interesting, has that really changed. It, I guess it has I didn't know that. I didn't know that one could flip. I know. Well, I was always torn because I felt like I liked to start my day. Like in the way that you're saying I compress at night with my shower, I felt like in the morning it woke me up to shower and like started my day, started my day clean. I would like do my hair and get ready, like a full get ready in the morning, which made me then feel like very on top of things. And like my hair looks good and I'm clean and I'm in an outfit and I'm ready to go. I don't know. Something about that helped start my day on the right foot I also used to be a morning workout person and so Mm, yeah I would like work out early get back shower do the whole thing but I shifted my workouts to the evening and with that shifted my showers and I am never going back like Mm. you're gonna put your dirty ass feet in your bed at the end of the day that's where I'm at I'm a very I'm a little bit of a clean freak like not overly but I I have um relatively high standards for like cleanliness in my home and I I don't like outside clothes on the bed type of thing oh interesting yeah so I'm okay. not trying to get in bed and tuck my little toesies in if they haven't been <laughs> like cleansed <laughs> Blends I think I guess that was that a squeaky squeaky clean sound effect you did it kind of sounded like the psycho killer like <laughs> it sounded like yeah if anyone's like stabbing bed, my bed toes creaking. yeah <laughs> so it's actually just me getting into the bed after my shower it's not <laughs> it was supposed, your toes all supposed to be cleaning my toes with what's a little washcloth what's that noise oh that's just just rub- rubbing her toes in bed they're clean so that happened okay i've I've always a lot of people have told me that i would have a good that you have loud (laughs) toes oh no but i have a good voice for like audiobooks or i mean podcasts or like um that i should look at voice acting or whatever but i cannot do sound effects for shit so okay yeah i guess no that was good in there thanks it was good it was good so we're on the night shower train with this hot take. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else is wrong for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> Suckers. Okay. Suckers. Next up. Give me one. Okay. This one I'm going to get so fired up about. Oh, shit. Baby on board, car stickers, or decals. Oh, they're all a lie. The, none of them have a baby. They just don't want you to honk at them when they're Stop driving. Stop it. <laughs> they're all a ah! lie. <laughs> That's the best hot take I've ever heard. None of them actually have a baby. Yeah. Have you same, actually? Same, like, same, looked? same with the student driver. They're just slow drivers and they got a sticker. I don't believe so any right. of them. I don't believe any of them. Show me the data. Show, show me the, the data. data that shows show me the otherwise. fucking baby, dog. Show me the fucking baby. Hold the baby up. First, I don't actually believe that, but that is something I think every time I see the baby on board sticker or the student driver sticker. First of all, I'm like, I should get one of those because I don't want people to honk at me either. Right. Um, but yeah, I basically. I guess I don't think about how many babies are in a car until I see one of those stickers. And I'm like, there's definitely not one in that car. Right. Okay. You know what forces you to think about how many babies might be in a car? 
<laughs> not exactly these baby on board stickers, but the stickers that are like the whole family. Oh, and oh the like little the stick, stick figures. figures. That is what. That's so weird. I don't actually, the baby on board, I haven't thought about very much, but those family stickers yeah. make me furious. Like when right? I see them, I'm just like, okay, um, I know people too. Do you want me to like put <laughs> stick figures too. of Sounds all the like people you- that might ever be yeah. in my car on? Because I can. <laughs> There's a lot of them. It'll be bigger it's than your family. It's in their family. Just I know people too. <laughs> You're bragging. That's like, stupidest reaction. <laughs> they just for I don't know why they make me so mad, but they make it, me it, mad. No, I totally agree, and I haven't quite articulated, but there's something obnoxious about it. It's I mean, it's like this weird badge of like suburban honor or something <laughs> like look at us and like we stacked the bodies from boys to girls from tallest to smallest and the dogs are at the end and like it's like get over yourself so you have five kids cool I guess you love sex like stop <laughs> why don't you just get a sticker that says I love sex I love it it would be more That's- efficient yeah. um, the I thing is too, too thinking about people like adding to those when they have another kid or let's say when their kid gets older like Maybe there's a yeah. little baby, but then it's no longer relevant when your kid is 10. So do you, do you need to peel off the baby one and like replace yeah. it with a child size one? Just That's thinking so about somebody like the upkeep for the people that really care about this. And they're like, oh, I got to on his birthday. I got to go on Amazon and <laughs> yeah, order upgrade. the bigger size one. Wow. Um, that part also kind of like does something to my brain that That's I don't so like. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I just have questions about bumper stickers in general. Like, don't I'm I'm not offended if somebody has them, but I cannot imagine a world in which I would buy one and put okay. it on my car. And the, what's kind of funny about bumper stickers, I think when you see somebody's bumper sticker, it the feeling is that like they're screaming this thing at you whatever the thing is I have a family I love the earth I whatever the political thing like whatever it is that they're like it feels like they're screaming it at you but I feel like the reality is more so that like someone they know gave it to them as a stocking stuffer once and like they put it on their car and it's just (laughs) there but like but the feeling is that they're screaming it all the time but also maybe some people do feel like they want to be screaming it but I don't know. Well, there's a difference between, okay, somebody gave you that sticker. You could either put it on your car and make sure that it's seen every day by strangers all the time as you drive around town, or you could put it on like a notebook. You could put it on like a coffee mug. You could put it on. You're right. Maybe they want a mirror. I think I'm giving these people too much credit to put stickers. So they do want to be screaming it at you. That being said, I did recently get one and only one bumper sticker. Yeah. And. I've never been a bumper sticker person. I guess in high school, I had like our school name bumper sticker. Um, But in my adulthood, I haven't had one. And you know those Maryland crab bumper stickers that are the Maryland flag that like a lot of people have? It's just the flag, I guess. It's it's a crab shape. Oh, yeah. It's filled in with the flag, Mm -hmm. um, which is a very eccentric (laughs) flag. I got one of those recently because... Whenever I go home and I see people driving around with them, I feel like it's so nostalgic and it just makes Aww. me think of like Baltimore, which is where I went to college and where my cousins grew up and like I spent a lot of time there and um I don't know. It just is like a, cool. a nostalgic one for me Love it. because I don't live there anymore. Yeah. I was like that would be a really nice little thing to add on my car and just like nod to my home state so I did that's that that's true recently. okay so maybe that's how a lot of people feel with their bumper stickers and then when I see them I'm just being like this person wants me to move to Maryland that's rude <laughs> but they're just like I just like Maryland oh yeah no that's really sweet when you describe it that way I mean that this means person that- thinks I should go to Maryland fuck them <laughs> There's still a line. There's still a line because I don't yeah. like the baby ones. But yeah, there can be, you can make a case for it. Show up in okay, court I, and make a case for your bumper sticker. Make a case and... for your bumper sticker. <laughs> I, I do have one question. I'm trying to think about the bumper stickers I've seen before. And I there's only really one that I vividly think about pretty often. I don't know what it is. I'm sure people have seen it. It says salt life. It's like a specific, it's a, like a specific brand or logo mm-hmm. or like it's in a specific lettering that says salt life. It's, it seems like surfery or I don't fucking know, but it looks the way it's written. Every time I see it, I'm like slut life. Every time I see it, <laughs> it looks like someone 
because the font is weird on their car yeah that's bragging about the slut life and i think that's fun i think that is fun and every time i'm disappointed that it actually says salt life right okay yes i just looked it up i i like that rang a bell but i needed to visually see it it Um, looks like slut life if you're like a little it does if you're you're not a great reader like me it looks like slut life if you're squinting which is what you should be while you're driving um (laughs) It looks like Slut Life. Yeah, I think it's just like a beachwear brand or something. Yeah, I I feel like I've seen a lot of those in like Rehoboth and yes, totally beaches. It's it's in the area, so just know someone listening to this podcast has a Slut Life bumper sticker and know that's what it looks like. And we are screaming it's Slut Life, the Slut Lifestyle. I'm gonna get you one of those now, and that should be your only (laughs) your only bumper sticker. Slut Life till I die. Okay. All right. Next. Let's, next. One. Let's move on to it. Let's move on, dude. I think we just talked about bumper stickers for like twenty minutes. <laughs> it was pretty good. Pretty good. I, yeah, I think that's the hottest take on bumper stickers you're gonna get anyway. Yeah. This is totally steamy. This side of the Mississippi. Are we on the same side of the Mississippi? Um. I S S I S S I. Do you remember that? Of course I do. I think it every time. That I have to write the word Mississippi, which is not very often, which is why I'm not a pro at did it. You, wait, did you know it? I knew it from doing gymnastics and on the parallel bars. You could spell out Mississippi with your legs. You'd be like, you go over the parallel bars with both legs and that's an M. And then down in the middle is an I. And then S, you'd hook one over. And then S, you'd hook the other Whoa. over. And then I, and then a P, you'd hook one over and make a loop. And M-I-S-S-I. <laughs> that sounds painful. I'm not familiar. Oh, okay. I don't know where I knew it from. I thought it just, I thought it just went around school when we were, again, we're always talking about spelling, but I thought it was just like a trick to know how to spell it. Yeah. And I don't know. And it just like I sounds, just like, you can hear it in your head, you know? It's a catchy beat. It's a, it's a banger. It's a beat. Bah, we should get a DJ <laughs> to do a Mississippi bong. I'm doing so many sound effects today. What the fuck? And my SSI is I hope everyone goes on YouTube to watch the face, the face that Jess made. Wow, that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. We got fucking adorable. A bong. (laughs) I'm good at it because I was a bass in my acapella. You just said you're good at that. I'm good at it. I know how to do that bass for sure. You are a DJ. For sure. I beatboxed sometimes, and I would be like, "You're a DJ." (laughs) <laughs> yeah the secret this For whole time sure. is that i i'm actually a dj and i have all the answers and i won't tell you you're so fucking cute i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna <laughs> smother you i'm gonna smother you okay i'm gonna okay. SSI. let's go next let's go next let's go next <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna say here's the next one couples sitting on the same side of the booth I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you would. I have more complex feelings about it. Cool. I can I can defend mine. You go first. Okay. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anyone to give me a hard time for doing it. I deserve love and affection. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> extra key today. <laughs> I also want you hate other people for doing it <laughs> yeah it can be both it can be both it can be both I was thinking about this from a past episode where we were talking about people who walk slowly out of the gym and you were like I want to sign off on this but I might be an offender it's often both I'm an offender mm-hmm. of lots of the things I hate that's why I hate myself if I said that I, hate myself, <laughs> like, I do most of these things yeah it's both it's both okay it's sweet yeah sick I as long <laughs> as we're clear on that there's um the other thing I realized about this one, I went to a cafe in my neighborhood the other day to get breakfast. And like, I actually, instead of picking it up and taking it to go, I sat there and there was this older couple. This is such an unassuming cafe. It's like neighborhood coffee shop. The setup is really humble. The chairs and tables are like kind of broken. Like it's not the cutesy place in cool. town, but I love it. And yeah. neighbors love it. Sounds like a um, there yeah there was this older couple that walked in and ordered their stuff and the woman went and sat down at a table um and then the man followed her 
and he sat right next to her on one side of the table and there was no one else with them and I saw them and I was like this is adorable and I think that old people get a pass for like 95 percent of things that happen yeah in society where I was just like that's so cute I want when I'm that age to still be sitting on the same side as my partner like still want that type of closeness with them when we're just out for a casual coffee that's like very unassuming it's it was like a Wednesday it was not a weekend it was not like a date day for them it was just like a informal morning coffee and they sat on the same side and I thought it was adorable so yeah very specific people deserve love in my eyes when it comes to the other side of the table yeah me and you (laughs) and old people (laughs) and old people oh totally no that would absolutely melt my heart um you do deserve love I don't know if I do, but I'm, I demand it. And <laughs> I I like sitting on the same side of the table. Okay. I like sitting on the same side of the table. First of all, I want to be holding hands all the time. I don't give a fuck. Mm. I don't give a fuck. And also, actually, the bigger reason is that I don't like staring at people. I don't mm. like staring at people. Like, I really like some of my favorite spots to go, even with friends, is to sit at like my favorite bar spot sits on a corner of an intersection and stares out at the street. And so you like sit at the bar and you stare out with your friends and it's, I feel like sitting on a park bench and you're both looking out at the park instead of staring at each other. And then you can both comment on the park. Like I love people watching, people watching one of my favorite activities to do alone, to do with people. And then, you know, even in a coffee shop or cafe or restaurant, I'm I think it's weird to sit on the same side. I think it's less acceptable to sit on the same side. If it's like a actual sit down restaurant, like fancy dinner, ordering yeah. wine, like that's a little more annoying. But if it's like a diner or a cafe or a coffee shop, I'm happy to sit across from someone, but I'm not offended to so next time. Cause then you get both get to look out and you're like watching a movie. You're watching the movie of the fucking, this world full of freaks together. Yeah. So that's why that's I a like really it good point. more so. It's not even so much to be affectionate. It's because I want us to watch the same show. Yeah. I love the way you describe that. Um, that's a really good point. And I also think that's kind of a dating hack in and of itself is totally it makes it so much easier, especially on early dates. But I think it applies in long term relationships, too. But especially with someone that you like don't know yet and you're kind of nervous and like looking sitting across a table Ugh. and having like an interrogation style meal is just like me in the a head. lot it's so sitting much next to each other at a bar I feel like people yeah. end up going to a bar and sitting next to each other anyway a lot of the times on first dates but if you're not doing it consciously know that that's actually something that's probably helping you kind of like connect a little bit more and feel a little bit more at ease sooner it takes and the like- pressure off and if you're not staring at people in the eye whether it's someone you know well or not when you're not staring each other in the eye you're able to open up more because it's you yeah. know someone's staring into your soul if it's it's just kind of the same idea of like the trope of laying down on the therapist's couch and staring up at the ceiling while you talk like you're going to open up more if you're not like someone's not bearing into your eyes mm-hmm. um you you don't feel as intruded and you can actually be more open and um, it's also the same reason I find it draining to just like stare some in the eyes. First of all, eye contact is just exhausting to me, but I think it's why I find FaceTime fucking exhausting. Yeah. I I would much rather, if, it, if I really want to catch up with you, if it's a person I don't get to talk to a, much, a lot, I would much rather do a phone call. I will be listening better. Yeah. And it's the same reason most of us find Zoom exhausting because to sit and just stare some in the eyes is not the way we have conversation when we're sharing a space together. You're looking around, you're doing whatever. So whether it's on FaceTime, Zoom, or a date, to just stare someone down, it's exhausting. It's weird. Mm-hmm. It limits things, is what I think. Yeah, and one example of this, I, I totally agree with like the Zoom and FaceTime example. That's why so many people burnt out during the pandemic and are continuing to burn out with remote yeah, video, work. video work is um, exhausting. But the other thing is, just in person with people on love is blind this happened once where you know that's the dating show where people meet behind a wall they don't get to see each other um there's a wall in between them and they have all of their conversations with this wall in between them and then they decide whether they want to meet in person and get engaged and like proceed in the experiment there was one couple at some point that once they were out in the real world and they were engaged um and in person with each other 
they were having a really hard time connecting in the same way that they did back in the pods when they were between the wall. And so they would actually like in the, their apartment where they lived yeah. together, sit around the corner from each other and like sit on the floor. One person's in one room and the other person's in the other room around the corner. I think I saw that. Yeah. And talk to each other. And I think they got a lot of shit for it because they were a little <laughs> bit more of a like toxic, dysfunctional couple that wasn't working out on the show. And people were like, they can't even look at each other and have this conversation. Like they only worked in the pods. I understand why they got that criticism and it's a dating show, whatever. But um, I actually think there's something to be said for that. Like, yeah, you don't, first of all, I don't know. Sounds kind of hot. Up more. Yeah. Sounds kind of just, just hearing just a different their voice. Dynamic. It sounds like just a, I don't, I don't know if you do it all the time, but it sounds like a cool way to mix things up. I like that. That sounds yeah. fun. Okay, sweet. We're done. Fucking sick. That. Sick. Once, Once again, again crushed it. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Ty. Yay. Boxer shorts. On who? Great follow up question. It didn't say, but do both. Start with men, men wearing boxer shorts. I like them. Straight cis men. Oh, why them? I don't know, because maybe it's like cooler when gay guys or trans guys do it. <laughs> Oh, I like boxer shorts. Boxer, I oh. call that boxers. Yeah, I like boxers. Yeah. Okay. No, so I like them. Views. Yeah, I I like them. I mean, I don't dislike them, but I do think like grow up. You know. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is it a less mature thing? I feel like the worst option of the male underwear would be just briefs. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I can't remember the last time I saw a human adult in briefs. Yeah, I don't. I don't wish to. It's something that I can go my whole life without seeing. Probably someone um, European. Sorry to all the Europeans listening, but oh, true. Def- I'm sure. definitely a European. It works better in tight pants, like European fitting pants. I'm sure. Um. Blech. So that's the worst. Yeah, that one sucks. Agree. But then I prefer boxer briefs above all else like that's what they're called they're called uh, or yeah the tighties the tighties the The tighties yeah that's what i think you typically see guys our age wearing oh it Um, is definitely typically what you see but sometimes i'm like where are the boxers at okay where where the shorts at i think i always expect i don't know why i always expect boxer shorts and it never is them it never happens well i don't i and i don't feel disappointed i just feel like that's (laughs) what i i thought come on I just feel like that's like what um maybe that's like what Barbie dolls had on like Ken dolls and I think that's like mm. sorry for this Freudian slip but that's like what my dad had so that's mm. like what I associated as like these are what adult men wear right okay when I was a kid maybe I could see that I mean I, I the more I think about it the more I'm like I don't have prob I don't have a problem with boxers I think I would find it weird if a guy wore them daily and wore them under okay. his clothes daily like it doesn't make just sense seems for bulky. the the the, the tight i mean yes now that we have tighter guys wear tighter pants than they did in like the 90s or whatever how could you get boxers in there i would say i think this is actually the thing is that if i need to borrow some shorts yes. i would rather put on boxers i do not want to put on briefs i will not be putting on your briefs it's gonna look stupid as hell All on right. me and it's emasculating so i on me right that's why i want to see the boxers because i'm like i'm gonna have to wear those okay i'll wear either and i like wearing either i mean the briefs oh. they have my butt more it's like kind of hot when i wear them i feel like they lie. don't look quite right first of all i have bigger legs and a bigger butt than the biggest man so <laughs> it like it there it's always like <laughs> suddenly this is a thong yeah they look <laughs> right on me yeah i i I don't mind it. Like if I'm comfortable with someone, I feel like I'll wear either. But I do want you I don't I don't want them to like not own any boxer shorts. I agree with you. Having some boxer shorts for a more comfy day or for me to borrow, totally cool. <laughs> and if you're hanging around the house and you're wearing boxer shorts, like that also makes sense to me. I think it's more wearing them underneath clothes. It reminds me of my cousins, like my male cousins growing up like as who kids. were like in their teens. Yeah, as kids and teens and they would wear their boxers and they would kind of like peek out of their pants or they would even wear them underneath swim trunks, which I never understood. 
Um, oh yeah, that's a weird look. I knew some people who did that as like teenagers, which was wild. I guess yeah. I guess they had their reasons, but whatever. So wearing boxers under clothes just feels juvenile to me for some reason. I think it is. I mean, I actually can't think of a time I've seen a guy, an adult man, actually wearing them. So maybe if I saw it, I would be repulsed. Like I it hasn't been tested. It hasn't been tested. So I guess maybe I don't know that I like that. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. I just want them. I think I just need to own a pair. Yeah. Well, your first question when I announced this topic was on who. So yeah, yeah you clearly, the whole point has been you in boxers. The whole I, because we <laughs> spent a lot of time in boxers shorts because we'd wear yes. them under our Catholic school girl skirts. You had Kilts. to wear shorts under, you had to wear, like I wore, you could wear shorts. You could wear gym shorts under your skirt, but I more often wore legit men's boxers. So they feel kind of comforting and safe to me. I'm like mm. used to wearing them, which is maybe strange. Yeah. No, actually that makes a lot of sense. I, and that was always the best thing to wear under your kilt. Cause it's much softer than like your PE shorts. They're lighter. They're, um, it's not as bulky. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Sophie's or Sophie? Sophie's. Shorts? I always called them Sophie's. Yeah. Those were Hot. I mean, that's like a blast from the past. Talk about slut life. Yeah, totally. How many times did you roll yours? Oh, if I got more than two roll, I think you had to be two rolls. Excuse me. You had to do at least two rolls if you wanted to hang. If you wanted to be totally. Cool. Um, but any more than that, and it would sh- the rolls would show kind of through your skirt. It's too much bulk. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, two two rolls I did too I mean sometimes I would want to do one like on a low-key day where I'm like not trying to <laughs> impress anyone okay if um, you guys want to look up these shorts it's s-o-f-f-e-e shorts I don't know if this is like culturally significant to anyone else right s-o-f-f-e-e I think, it is. I think it's culturally significant was it of the time else. yeah 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 s-o-f-f-e shorts and it's the one with the white waistband on top there's really nothing notable about them but we wore them all the time basically Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's do all one more. Right. Yeah, totally. I don't know if you're going to have a hot take on this one. If it doesn't work, we'll do a different one. I okay. have a somewhat hot take. Okay. Brunch. This is what I'll say about it. I used to love a bottomless bu- brunch. I would go in DC. I feel like they're really popular in DC. I would go almost every weekend with my friends. It was a fun time. Agree with what you're saying. Like, Okay, it's a venue to Some get meal. together with people Having, and hang eat out and with drink. Yeah, are you saying that you're somebody who doesn't like to hang out with your friends and eat and drink? Like we're all brunch girls. Right. But at the same time, would I rather do breakfast or lunch? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Brunch is kind of like it's one of those things. I'll do it. I love it. I'm not shading you if you do it, but it's a little overrated. It's really busy. It's you're not really getting a good deal. Yeah. Like every the most expensive good deal. egg and piece of bread I've ever had in my life. Right, but people are like this oh, take. I agree mimosas. with mimosas. It's like no, uh, you're barely getting anything out of that. Yes. and like they're so you're not getting down. enough sustenance, sun- sustenance from your meal to like hold up the fact that you're drinking all of that. It's just like it's overpriced. It's really busy. It's really chaotic. I would much rather do breakfast, lunch, or dinner any day of the week. I also, what I would say about brunch, the way I like to do brunch is like at someone's house. I love Mm. going to someone's house and like it's a potluck or they're hosting or whatever and everybody brings like baked goods and this and that and somebody brings the mimosa stuff and somebody brings this. Like brunch is a cute concept. It's a great time of day to get together and gab. I'm like so for the concept, but in practice at restaurants and stuff, I often, I guess I go and end up disappointed like more times than not. Totally. Okay. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. That is a good take. Um, That I agree with. It's overpriced, too much hype, too much weight. Who gives a fuck? I could have made these two fucking wet eggs at home. (laughs) I'm not as into, I'm not into lunch as a over it, but I'm, I'm really into breakfast recently or even just morning coffee dates because sometimes I don't want to eat early in the morning but I've been doing a lot of my hangs with friends at like 8 a.m. having Whoa. a coffee or breakfast and it gets me out of bed because I, I sleep late otherwise. It gets me out of bed. It's the best way to start my day. I love, I love. It makes me feel like I'm in sex in the city. Like meeting up with gals on the Upper West Side. I'm going to have a breakfast. Uh, 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 uh. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I haven't done mm-hmm. that in so long, but 
I like I used to do it way more often when I went to an office and somebody would be like do you want to meet for coffee like before work like around the corner from our office like a coworker who I was friends with type of thing and I used to do that a lot and then I don't know sometimes I do it I should do it more because whenever I do I get that feeling of like oh what a great way to start the day it's nice now I'm like positive going into everything else because I saw my friend and like I'm up and at them you get some connection to start your day instead of like in the evening it kind of doesn't matter who I'm seeing I'm pretty much dead and dreading it by the evening I'm Mm -hmm. so dead by the end of the day I want to work out and that's going to revive me and that's pretty much it but I'm not I don't like bring a great energy by the by evening social time yeah yeah heard that heard that dude (laughs) (laughs) okay there's more but i feel like we've done plenty we can save them we can keep collecting them if you guys liked the hot takes send us more i feel like i really um people listen to our request which is to send them without your take included so that we can like get to it Mm -hmm. um but feel free to follow up with us if we did yours today and tell us if we got it right or not from your perspective. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. follow up and let us know. I think it'd be nice to include the, the submitter's opinion. Maybe we'll repost it to a story or something. Yep. See if we got it right. See if there's something we missed that was on your mind. Please. Oh, that would be great. Oh, my gosh. And if we missed something, yeah, write us about it. Um, Leave us a voice memo about it. Like, tell us and we'll share it. Um, So I'm going on vacation. So you guys are going to get some solo eps over the next couple of weeks because Caroline and I have back-to-back trips coming up and vacations. It's the beginning of July. It's my birthday month. I'm like ready to get the hell out of Dodge. And Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to Greece and London and I leave tomorrow and I'm really excited. And I realized that I haven't had a vacation that's like on my terms and my terms only in a mm. really long time. Like every I I go places all the time. I'm always on a plane. I'm always traveling. I'm always heading somewhere. And I always have a good time with it. I'm like like to see my friends and my family and like to go new places. But I feel like all my travel in the last couple of years has been visiting people or like for work even or maybe it's for a trip, but it's kind of like a group trip that maybe was really somebody else's idea. Um all of which is fun. Don't get me wrong. Like I've had great times on those trips, but this is the first one in a while where I'm going and it's just like me, my cousin's coming with me. She's like the chillest person ever. And we've already talked about like doing separate things for a lot of the days. And I'm just ready to un- turn off my bl- brain and unplug and have it be like just time. And I just wanted to share that. I don't know. Like, do you relate what I feel like it's so hard to come by travel that's like that lately, even though Oh, yeah. That's kind of supposed to be what it is, I think. No, no, <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I totally relate. That's literally why I went on my solo trip. It was, um, that was it. Like, I can't just slip into like caretaker mode with my family or like control mode, or I guess it would be fine with friends but um I'm actually going on a trip a couple trips coming up with friends and I'm very excited about it but it's just a different thing yeah it's like to me it's the same it's just a different flavor like sometimes I like to hang out with my friends in the evening sometimes I like to hang out alone in the evening they're just completely different not having to worry about and you're you're kind of a worrier you're kind of a caretaker you're an organizer so I could definitely see that weighing on you like the concern of you know everyone's doing well or someone else's schedule someone else's needs like I don't yeah. know we get to there's if there's moments to be selfish seize them that's what I say yeah. <laughs> if there's moments to be selfish where it doesn't hurt somebody seize them because they're rare. totally totally <clears throat> yeah I guess that's I you articulated kind of like the factors that go into it more than I had even unpeeled in my own head I mean now I'm realizing we've talked about I feel this like a little bit before. you talked about it when we were talking about the solo trip I feel like yeah. you shared some of these things that I can definitely see being like your cross to bear based on how you like take care of people and stuff yeah oh my gosh you talking about my cross to bear I don't think I, I was... ever got to say this on the on the podcast with you but in your first solo episode, when you made the Uh-oh. joke, that's not actually a joke about, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. what did you say? You were like, 
My favorite thing about Jess is that she, she puts her heart everything into everything to heart. Yeah, she yeah. takes everything to heart, and that's her. And cross then you're to bear. like, and that must be also her cross to bear. And then you cackled. I cackled with you. Like the first time I listened to that, I cackled so hard. I thought it was so funny I, because I think it's I said because I think I said that probably that probably has to suck. Like taking everything to heart is like what makes you beautiful, and like it's gotta probably suck to be you. That sounds exhausting. <laughs> it was so I felt so seen in such a quick moment there, and I I always meant to bring it up on the podcast or just to you and say like how hilarious that was because Aww. it was true. Oh, it was true. Um, what the hell? Yeah. So yeah, that's all. It's yeah. This wasn't a segment. It's just like a life, personal update. That that's where I'm gonna be, and I can't wait. And is it a week? Yeah, just over a week. I'm gonna be in Mykonos <laughs> with my cousin, and then wow. that's like five or six days. And then I'm flying on the way back home to Chicago. I'm stopping in London and seeing my friend Mary, who lives there. And um, I'll only be there for a couple days and then I'll head back. I've been to London. I've actually been to both before. I've been to London multiple times. Um, Greece, I've been to once when I was like probably 10, 12 years ago with my family. I was maybe 20 or 19. And I was just a jackass. Like I was a brat. <sighs> I could not appreciate that trip at all. I mean, I appreciated oh, how so beautiful when it was. Kid, yeah. But I remember just being like, I'll come back here when I'm older. Like I <laughs> don't want to be with these people I don't know I was like in my phone the whole time texting my friends because it was like freshman year after college I had just hilarious made new friends and I just wanted to like be there with them it's just the worst version of a person um oh that's what's important at that age I guess so you don't have to put it down like whatever you you, you're focused on what was important to you yeah yeah I guess so it just is such a ass I don't know it makes me feel like an ass because it's like your parents took you to Greece, dude. Like lift your head out of your phone. You sure, know? <laughs> that's easy. But the thing with any of these things, like this, it's like you weren't doing that for no reason. It's not because you were like an asshole when you were 19. It's like, yeah. like why would a 19-year-old do that? Maybe because they're in a totally new environment in college. They're stressed out about having a social world, something that stresses out people at every single age. There's this feeling of scarcity, like everyone's going to make a friend and you're not going to. Like these aren't small or insignificant things. Mm-hmm. I don't... I don't like to just like dismiss it like you like you were focused on that for no fucking legitimate reason like there's a legitimate reason when you were 19 whatever now you're in a different place it's, it's chill dude this is so healing I've never dude. talked about this in therapy because it's like such a small thing but that I just accepted as like I was a brat moving on not something people don't I need do to things unpack. for no reason people but don't do so we, right. no one no one does anything for no reason like there's a reason and you can also want to change that behavior but like whatever that was your priority then it's okay yeah my priority was a a boy that had a girlfriend that I was in love with so yeah that's a tough one I had a reason (laughs) that'll get you that'll fucking ruin a family trip yeah (laughs) you think you're gonna be present on your with your parents during that no fucking way dude I have to text this boy that doesn't want me okay Um. (laughs) okay bring it home baby girl do you have something funny to say to me no (laughs) <laughs> I was about to do the outro. I was about to do oh, the outro. So I, felt like, funny to say. I felt like I that's the only thing I had to say, but it's uh it's not a big bang at the end of the ep, you know. But if we don't have it, we had plenty of fun moments, so I'm not I'm not worried. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just do it. I, do I don't it. think I have anything. Listen, we had plenty of fun moments and you can't <laughs> prove otherwise. So this has been not for everyone. I'm gonna say this week, what do we want? What's it called? I should give. Oh, I thought of one that we should say um the other day. I don't remember anymore. Fuck. <laughs> we did review, we did Instagram. I think it's good. We can keep rotating them or something, or like focus on one for a while. Just feel like it's good to give like one call to action. Yeah. Or My not. It's just cracked. <laughs> you're in your boxer shorts era there yeah (laughs) oh my god so true um yeah i don't know what else there would be you could they could send us send us more hot takes send us hot takes or send us um hot takes what to do's like just topics they want us to talk about like give us some fodder for the love of god okay i'm gonna (laughs) say this i'm gonna say this y'all this the year this is your homework assignment i like to give out homework i decided just now when i said that sentence which is that you're going to send us in some more hot takes you want some topics you want us to cover 
I also want some fodder for my solo up I want to hear, but by the time this comes out, I already have recorded it. So I'll post yeah. on Instagram. So this is irrelevant to you, people of the future. So there's <laughs> some topics you want us to cover in upcoming episodes. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, I think we're due for a what to do episode. Mm. So if you want to send us in a what to do, um, send us in a what to do. Remember to, to start your message with what to do, all in caps in the beginning. Otherwise, it might just pass me by. You're and you can follow so good at this. Wow. <laughs> you just coached me on what to say for like three minutes before. <laughs> Maybe if you uh, watch on YouTube, you'll see the outtakes that we don't cut out of us yeah. being like, say, now say me saying, say, hey, I love you. You're doing great. Holding your hand. Now say this. <laughs> yeah. And then afterwards you say, wow, you came up with that all on your own. You're like, hey, you're like an overly generous stepmom. Like, God, you're not my mom. I know you're doing. You're trying to get me to like you. <laughs> um i did a great i did a great job jess was extra cute today you can find us on instagram not for everyone with the number four jess is jay-z to bakey i'm on youtube caroline winkler and that's all i got peace out honeys bye-bye baby girls and boys and persons and dogs (laughs) Ah! so equal so equal